a little bit about myself. Uh, I am a, a nuclear engineer uh, from Purdue, Purdue University. Uh, I've been in the uh, utility business uh, for over 25 years. I've uh, been a utility executive for uh, over 10 years and uh, have worked primarily in nuclear, uh, although I did uh, was a plant manager of a, a, a hydroelectric plant and a pump storage facility. So there's a couple of things that, uh, one thing that I got to get straight right, right away. So Dr. Sheets, we got to get one thing straight. Nuclear power plants and bombs don't go together. You didn't like that. <laughs> no, not at all. Um, and, I, and, I'll make, and I'll make this uh, real clear real quick. I was trying to be neutral. I was. <laughs> well, but but this is a this is an important point. Um, nuclear power plants use uranium just like bombs use uranium, but there's a thing called enrichment, and uh, nuclear nuclear power plants uranium two thirty five is the quote unquote good <coughs> stuff. It's an isotope of uranium that uh, that does the fission part. Uh, in bombs, uh, bombs are enriched to about 95% uranium-235. Uh, nuclear reactors, on average, are about 28 to 3% uranium-235. So nuclear reactors cannot explode uh, like bombs at all. So got to get that clear and straight, because one of the things that's in my presentation, uh, we, ask, we were asked a series of questions, and I'm gonna, actually going to go through those questions, is one, what's one of the biggest problems with nuclear power and public perception and mistruths it was one of the things that uh, that we have and I know you were trying to do a, a good thing and I think you did I think you did a good job of, of covering uh, the different powers but that's how how uh, mistruths get get founded um, thank you for correct no sweat and one other thing I'd like to say actually before I jump into my presentation uh, my uh, my middle daughter is here today. I actually live here. I have two homes, one here and uh, one in North Carolina. And I was uh, very pleased to, for her to be able to come and, and hear me. I speak in a lot of different places, and rarely do they get to see me. So uh, that's kind of nice. Also, uh, good Dr. Sheets, when you, when you started, um, she looked at me and kind of laughed and said, I've heard this a thousand times <laughs> because uh, you know, as as I travel, people ask me, you know, I, you know, how does nuclear power work? And I always start with to make power, uh, big base load power, you got to boil a lot of water. Uh, you boil water, make steam, turn a turbine, turn turns a generator, and that's uh, that's how you make base load power. And uh, nuclear is just another way to heat the water. Uh, and just for orders of magnitude up for you guys. Um, a large nuclear plant or a large uh, fossil plant will burn on the order of about, or make about uh, 13 million pounds of steam an hour. So when I say you got to boil a lot of water, it's a lot of water um, that you have to boil. So, um, Lonnie, you talked about uh, having a mix. I think, Dr. Sheets, you talked about having a mix also. It is very important to have. Um, a general mix of, uh, of power. Nuclear power makes up about 20% uh, of our electricity in the United States, and uh, it, is, it has kind of bounced around that number for some time. Uh, the beautiful thing about nuclear power is that it is um, emissions free. So we, we have that as an advantage, and I think that that's important that, that you know that and understand that. The, uh, one of the biggest issues, I guess you'd say, with nuclear power, other than uh, the public perception and, uh, and misinformation about nuclear power, is, uh, is dealing with the waste. Um, we have technical solutions to deal with the waste. Uh, you've heard of Yucca Mountain, I'm sure, and it, uh, it is a, a viable technical solution, but there's a political issue with dealing with it. Um, so there are ways that we can, we can deal with nuclear waste. Um, I think one of the things that, uh, that we have to talk about with nuclear power is its economic impact on the areas around it. Uh, nuclear plants uh, use a lot of people. Uh, hence, there's a large economic impact and they're very expensive. So there's a big tax base uh, around a nuclear power plant. So a typical nuclear power plant 
uh, generates about $430 million of economic benefit per year uh, for the local area around the site. So that comes in, uh, in the form of salaries, taxes, uh, schools, and, uh, and all the things that, that go with that. Uh, one of the other things that's really neat about nuclear power plants is they, tip, they typically today uh, uh, have staffs of around a thousand people. And those thousand people tend to be highly educated people that demand better schools. Uh, they participate in the, uh, in the local economy. They participate in local politics and uh, make the area around that plant better. In addition to, because uh, we're required by law to do emergency drills, we actually take the emergency response organizations around plants and train them to be, uh, to be better than what they are. Um, so let's, let's move on to uh, probably the, the key topic, and that is jobs. How does the uh, African American community uh, get involved in nuclear power and get the benefits of nuclear power? And I, and, uh, I say that's jobs. And where we are right now as an industry, our demographics are such that over the next uh, five to seven years, we're going to retire uh, about 25,000 workers. So those workers have to be replaced by our, by our oncoming uh, young people. And I think we could, we could um, set ourselves up for success if we put people in the, right, in the right places. So a lot of you think, so I say, hey, I'm a nuclear engineer from Purdue University. So maybe you think you got to be a nuclear engineer to work at a nuclear power plant. Not true. Uh, the majority of the people that we have at our plants are not engineers. We do have a, a, a high number of engineers, and I will always uh, support education, and I think if you are gifted in that way and inclined to do that, go do that. But let me just uh, mention some things. We have, uh, most plants have about 150 to 200 maintenance personnel, mechanics, electricians, uh, instrumentation and control uh, people. Uh, we have chemists, we have environmentalists, uh, we have IT people, we have uh, cost analysts, uh, we have project managers, uh, we have construction people. So there's a wide variety of, uh, of skill sets that you can have to, uh, to work at a nuclear power plant. I'll just give you a great example. I have a nephew that uh, really didn't want to go to college, wasn't set off in that way, and I happen to know that uh, that he's interested in welding. So I have him on a welding track right now, and uh, there are tons of opportunities for welders in nuclear plants. So I'm going to get him in the industry as a welder. So you don't have to have a technical degree uh, to, to work in our, uh, in our power plants. It helps to have one, but you don't have to have one. We have lots of folks uh, that don't have one. We have um, lots of programs around the country uh, that, that produce apprentices for nuclear plants, and I would encourage you to encourage young people to seek them out. Uh, Miami-Dade College, uh, just uh, south of here, has a program when I was the vice president of the Turkey Point plant, which is in uh, southern, uh, and down at the tip of the state, uh, right, at the, right at the start of the Keys. Uh, we hired uh, over 50 people out of that Miami-Dade program uh, directly to, to uh, Turkey Point. And there are several schools, uh, community colleges and, and universities across the, the country that have these programs and the utilities hire these people direct. Because one of the things uh, that we've learned over the years is if you hire people from where they're from, they tend to stay with you. So uh, there's 104 reactors in the United States kind of spread out all over the place. So if, uh, if you're in one of those states, um, I would highly encourage you to encourage young people to move into, uh, to try to, to find out the types of things that are happening at those utilities and plants and try to get yourself into the nuclear industry because it is growing and uh, gonna, gonna be, uh, have a big impact on our country. We're currently building four reactors right now, two in, uh, South Carolina and two in Georgia. 
uh, during our construction, we think we're going to build about eight, eight reactors by uh, 2020. Uh, at the peak of construction, uh, we're at 27, or about 2,500 people at the peak of uh, construction uh, and employees. And then uh, full time, uh, once the plant's running, we're at uh, 700 to 1,000 employees. And those employees are very well compensated. Uh, when I say very well compensated, every salary is at a nuclear plant run in about the $80,000 range. And there's many salaries that are, that are well over six figures. So uh, I would encourage you to get your folks uh, in, uh, involved in nuclear power. And with that, I'm going to wrap up and uh, I'm going to ask my panelists if you will come forward and uh, we'll take questions because this is a Q&A session, session. Correct? I'm sorry. Forgive me. You're right. Wrong. <laughs> you are absolutely right. So we're open sure. for questions. How much time, Jackie, do we have for questions? Ten minutes. Dr. Sheets, come on up here. No, this is not my no, time. But we got, they got to ask you questions. You get, you get your time in the barrel. He's got, he's got other, he's got other time on the agenda. Okay. Please, very good. Any questions? questions? Please, please, please. I know you have questions. Don't sit there like you don't have questions. I know you're burning to ask questions. Shall I start with the question yes. asking? So, um, Mr. Jefferson, you mentioned that um, that there are solutions to uh, to what to do with the waste from nuclear. Uh, facilities from yes. nuclear power facilities, and I, I just want to take a bit of issue with you that there is no process for the safe storage and disposal long term for the lifespan of uh, radioactive waste. And I just want to dialogue with you about that. You can put it in Yucca Mountain, but that's that's storage. That's not disposal, and that's not safe. That's just putting it out of sight, out of mind. Uh, what's your definition of not safe? I don't understand how you can say it's not safe. Well, let's see. Um, it can, it can leak, it can impact groundwater, it can impact surface subwater, it can then uh, move into aquifers, it can then contaminate drinking water supply as has been done at the Savannah River plant. Um, which I spent uh, half an afternoon, uh, an afternoon at two weeks ago. Um, it is, and, and, and I just want to say, Thank God there is a nuclear power industry because if we didn't have you, God only knows what we would do with this waste. And having looked at it with my own eyes and seeing 300 square miles of stored nuclear waste in the ground, that's storage. That's, that's an interim plan. And Yucca Mountain is an interim plan. There is no process for the safe containment of nuclear waste and radioactive waste. And you said that Yucca Mountain is an is a, is a answer. It's not an answer. It's just storage. Uh, it is storage. I agree with you there, but I disagree with you by saying it's not safe. First off, uh, it's dry fuel storage, so it can't leak. It's dry. Uh, secondly, uh, it's, it's stored in casks that uh, are welded shut and, uh, and, and encapsulated and, again, uh, can't leak. So there's no, no way for it to leak and get into the water table because there's nothing to leak because it's dry. Um, there's, there's no liquid involved uh, with it. Uh, the, the things that, uh, that you talk about at Savannah River were things that were done very, very early in the process. Over in France, uh, they solidify the waste. They take the waste and, uh, and, gla and, and turn it into glass. And that's so, what they do at Savannah uh, River now. So, so again, uh, it's, in a, it's in a very stable condition uh, where, it, where it cannot enter into any of, any of our environment. Uh, I agree with you that it is, a, it is storage uh, not conversion. Now, one of the things we can do, and, and I, I didn't talk about it, is we can reduce that amount by going back to uh, reprocessing and taking taking the, the waste that has, uh, I hate to say this, but I'm going to say it. Uh, as part of nuclear reaction, uh, plutonium-239 is produced. Plutonium-239 could be used as a fuel. Um, so that would reduce the amount of waste that we have if we were, if we were to do that. But there are uh, successful means of storing the waste. And the thought process is, once we store this waste in a safe uh, environment, in a safe, uh, a, a safe manner, some years down the road, some other technological advance will come about uh, to, to make that, uh, to, to do something else uh, with the waste. But if not, we can store it there indefinitely. Okay, other questions? 
Leslie? 